Donald, do you want to say some words? Okay. Dear Lord God, our respect and love, and we thank you for everything, God. Just pray that you'll please forgive us our sins. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In this episode, we're going to look at some of the prayers that Don Wells has made in church, some of the statements he's made on Facebook, and we're also going to briefly look into some of the other sort of prayer activities of other family members such as Candace and her mother Candy. Now the clip you've just heard is from the Kingsport Seventh-day Adventist Church. It was actually recorded four days after Summer's disappearance on June 19th and Don actually looks quite raw, he looks quite emotional, he looks quite fragile in the video and I will put a link to to it so you can see and hear it for yourself, you know, the, the full thing. I'm also going to play the full prayer that Don offers up and we're going to do a little bit of statement analysis on that. It is quite interesting what he says, how he says it and how he puts it. I think why this subject is quite interesting is the family friend, or you might say ex-friend of Candace's, Alison Harris, the mother of Macbeth, 15-year-old Macbeth, she said on another channel that she felt that Don was using the church as a crutch. And we're going to sort of investigate that here. I think to some extent, my personal feeling is to some extent, Don's um, feeling is genuine, but I think it fluctuates. I, I don't think he's always cynically using the church. I think that there are moments of sincerity, but I think there's also moments of, I think, perhaps using it as a crutch. The question is, is he using it as a crutch right now in terms of Summer's disappearance? And I think it is an open question whether criminals, people with a criminal past, or genuinely seeking God, or whether they're using God to sort of rehabilitate their reputations. Donald's Facebook, and we'll also be looking at that in some detail, um, almost every post is, and one gets the sense that he's sort of behooving us to seek the wisdom of God. You know, don't go to law enforcement, pray. And that's also something that makes a regular appearance in true crime. Before we get to today's episode, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment. Thank you to the many of you who have subscribed recently and let's get started. So what we're going to do now is listen to the full statement that Donald made. This was made at the Kingsport Seventh-day Adventist Church on I think the 19th of June 2021 and I'm going to play the full thing certainly the prayer that Donald gives. And I want you to listen to the pacing of it and what he's actually communicating. So we're going to play it three times, first without interruption, and then we're going to analyze some of it. Okay. <clears throat> Dear Lord God, our respect and love we thank you for everything, God. Just pray that you'll please forgive us our sins and help us carry on and uh, let us all give our lives to you, God, in every way. Let me carry my cross from here on out, Lord. We thank you, God, for everything. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please watch over Summer. She's been the light of my life for five years. I thank you for that, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father. Amen. So I think the most telling aspect of this is Don's effect. I mean, he didn't appear nearly this emotional on television. And I think he genuinely is grieving and upset. I, I think he's genuinely um, unhappy and, you know, in a state of mourning. He looks like a, a broken man. He looks um, traumatized. I think that that is definitely genuine. But what more than that? 
so let's break down the statements now and go through them step by step. Dear Lord God, our respect and love, and we thank you for everything, God. Now, I think the first thing to ask and do so with some sensitivity is to say, does it sound like Don is, is someone who prays often? Does it sound like Don is someone who, because we all know, well, I think a lot of us know the jargon of prayer, um, the sort of language um, the faithful use, the, the typical statements that are made. Does Don key into any of that? And I think one sort of giveaway that he doesn't is he sort of refers to God almost absently. He sort of adds it as an afterthought, you know, um, so he will address God, he will address the prayer, and then almost as an afterthought, add God into it, as though he's, he's trying to kind of correct himself. Do you get what I'm saying? So in that sense, one doesn't get a sense that this is very routine for him, that is a regular in church, that is a, someone who does pray regularly. Maybe he's had brushes with the church, but one doesn't really get the sense that he's extremely familiar with, with this um, scenario, right? I'm talking about a prayer scenario. He doesn't seem comfortable with it. Just pray that you'll please forgive us our sins. Yeah. So that is one of the first things that Don says is, is praying for forgiveness. Under the circumstances of summer being missing, that is a weird thing to think about. It's, it's weird that he's not praying for um, strength, praying for um, kind of comfort, praying for, you know, things like that, praying that God will sort of guide um, the search and, um, you know, give some kind of divine inspiration to um, to law enforcement or you know touch the heart of this person that they think might be responsible um, pray for summer herself right I'm just saying in terms of prioritizing the first thing he's prioritizing is forgiveness and I think that that says a lot you might say you're reading too much into it, it it's just incidental but if you think about it, if the first thing you want to say when you address God within the scenario of Summer's disappearance is forgiveness. Now, I'm not saying Don is necessarily guilty. And let's, let's say he's not guilty. Let's say he's not actually involved in Summer's disappearance. He may nevertheless feel responsible in some way. I mean, legitimately, he may feel he, he could have been a better father. He could have been a better caregiver he could have taken better care of summer right and so perhaps there is something in that forgiveness aspect where he does feel he needs to be forgiven because he did do something wrong does that make sense and help us carry on and uh... that's another thing that to me is a bit of a red flag um, it is something that does come up in true crime quite often where something happens that is devastating and kind of shocking to most of us people that aren't even related to the victim and then you sort of hear about wanting to go back to normal um you know chris watts also spoke about this is a nightmare that i wish i could wake up from it's this sense of wanting to put the present situation sort of um uh, that is that they're in um aside and they want to kind of go back to normal um, Amanda Knox was um, someone who did that as well who, who just wanted to after the death of her roommate wanted to kind of go back to um, university she wanted to just resume with classes and no one else was really thinking about that people were thinking okay well what happened here and so the sense of wanting to go back to normal does seem to be a kind of 
too rapid rationalizing of something that is still kind of happening. And so in a sense, there's a, a resignation, a sense of that he already knows what has happened. And now, well, let's try and rebuild and, and kind of get on with the rest of our lives. And th- that sentiment also came through in the Sermon on the Mount when they were speaking to the reporter, where he was saying something to the effect that um, that they are they are sort of ready to give up hope, that they've sort of lost hope with Rosemary and they, they've sort of reached the point that maybe they should be giving up hope with Summer. And then you actually hear Candace supporting him in that statement. It's just something that doesn't belong in this situation. It's something that sticks out. Let us all give our lives to you, God, in every way. So there's another example of something that doesn't quite ring true, meaning the the lexicon of someone in, in the church. Um, it's close to to how people would say that but it's not quite it doesn't quite ring true Uh, it's quite difficult to say why just the way I think he says let us give our lives um, you know that might be a way to perhaps conclude what he was saying Um, it's also a very strangely inappropriate thing to say in the circumstances you know they're looking for this little girl this five-year-old and 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 now in that context, it's, well, we, we want to give our lives. You know, if anything, you want to um, find someone alive. That should be the, the sentiment conveyed, not almost the opposite. The whole idea of giving lives is, you know, losing a life in a sense. I know in the Christian sense, it's, it's a little bit different, but I, I'm trying to get into Don's psychology and he's thinking about forgiveness and he's thinking about giving lives and isn't that what has happened that someone has lost her life and he is in a way acknowledging that in a subtle way is acknowledging that someone may no longer be alive that he thinks she's no longer alive or he knows that she's no longer alive let me carry my cross from here on out lord Everything that Don's saying feels like a bit of a cliche, a bit of a stereotype of Christianity. You know, forgive us our sins. You know, you carry your cross. Uh, we give, you give your life to Jesus or whatever. Um, and again, this, this thing of carrying your cross seems to be Don projecting a sense of guilt, um, a sense that this is something that is that is going to be a burden for him for the rest of his life. In other words, four days after her disappearance, Don seems to know what the future is going to hold. He's not really holding out. There doesn't seem to be much hope here. There seems to be, again, that sense of um, resignation, the sense that I think I know what happened or I know what happened. And I guess... That's it. We need to now move forward, right? It's just not the appropriate position for... I mean, can you imagine if law enforcement had that approach? Can you imagine if law enforcement had that sort of defeated, you know what, this is the cross we've got to bear, some has disappeared, okay, well, let's move on to other cases now. It tells a lot, doesn't it? Thank you, God, for everything. In the name of Jesus Christ. We can barely hear Don at this point. He he seems to be trying to wrap up. And if you think about it, at this point, he hasn't actually acknowledged Summer at all. He hasn't mentioned her. There isn't even a sort of an indirect thing such as, um, uh, Lord, please be with my wife, be with my children. Um, We're struggling. We are really, you know, kind of thing. It's not. It's he's not really acknowledging that uh, that to get the um, what do you call it? Almost the communal situation of the family that is sort of united in grief, united in missing his daughter, their daughter, a sister, a granddaughter, right? 
he seems to be thinking about himself and thinking about God and thinking about what people are thinking of him and God. Th- that seems to be the general thrust of it. And if you listen to that last statement, it sounds almost as though he was about to say amen. He was about to sort of conclude his prayer, except that he's forgotten to mention summer. And so he then adds summer as a sort of a postscript. Please watch over summer. She's been the light of my life for five years. I thank you for that, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father. Amen. So he does look truly grief-stricken here. He, he seems to be swallowing hard and struggling. And bear in mind, he is standing in front of a big group of people, right? It's not just one or two reporters with a camera. He's, he's faced with the community. And he's now got to sort of account for himself in a way in this prayer. And I, and I think he's feeling very exposed and very vulnerable. But I still think some of the ways in which he refers to summer are quite peculiar. Thank you, God, for everything. In the name of Jesus Christ, please watch over summer. So what he's asking, and that was just a little bit of a repeated clip, um, he's asking God to watch over summer. What do you think that means? Do you think it means... He thinks that she's alive somewhere and God must watch over her or, or that she's not, that she's in heaven and God must watch over her. What do, what do you think he means by that? Do you think it means almost in a sense that she's, she's um, buried somewhere or lying somewhere and in that sense God must watch over her? What do you think that means? Do you think it's logical to say in the in terms of a missing person's case that you would say watch over her? Do you think that that is logical? Isn't the most sort of urgent thing if you imagine that God is omniscient and God is all seeing that you would want God to fill you with inspiration and give you a sense of guide as to where she is. If you know where she is, let us know where she is. Why is that absent from, from this prayer? Or has Don not really thought about it? Has he not really thought that far? If not, what is he thinking about? She's been the light of my life for five years. I think. Now, if you think of those words, she's been the light of my life, um, there's quite a lot in that. There is, first of all, the past tense. And you might say, you know, you might say you could say that about anybody. You could say so- that about someone that you know in your family right now you know this person's been the light of my light my light of my life um but i think you could also argue that you would say you you are the light of my life she is the light of my life right and so this is once again an, an acknowledgement that he no longer thinks that that light is on she is no longer going to be the light of his life is, is it true that she's been the light of his life? I think it is. I think she did mean a lot to him. But I think when, in these circumstances, when you refer to someone as a light, you are acknowledging at the same time that that light has gone out, that that light is extinguished, that that life is no longer out there alive. And Chris Watts was someone who described his daughters also as the light of his life. He described them to Shanann, I think even to FBI agent Coda, and I think even in the Sermon on the Porch, he described his daughters as that when he, he well knew what he had done. And so thinking in those terms, when you're supposed to not know what is going on, is giving a kind of advanced knowledge that that you shouldn't have i mean yeah my, my kids are my life i mean those those smiles light up my life and this like i mean last night like during like at, you know when they usually eat dinner it was just like i miss them like i mean i miss telling them hey you got to eat that or you're not going to get your dessert you know and just like you're not gonna get your snack after i miss that like i, I miss them you know cuddle up on their couches 
they have like a Minnie Mouse couch and a Sophia couch that they cuddle up on and watch, you know, Bubba Guppies or something. And it was just like, you know, I, I, I was, it was tearing, tearing me apart last night and I needed that. I needed that last night. And for, that, for nobody to be here last night and to go into their rooms and, not, and know that I wasn't gonna turn the rain machines on. And I know that I wasn't gonna turn their monitor on. No, I wasn't gonna kiss them to bed tonight. It was, it, it was, I, I. So I've just played that from the Chris Watts interview and that was um, recorded a day after the incident with the Chris Watts family. So he had obvious knowledge of what was going on and, and he's leaking that in the interview, basically talking about things like, I know I didn't need to turn on this or that or, th or that thing, the baby monitor, the rain machine. And he also describes them as the light of his life. But he's using that metaphor because he knows that that light has been e extinguished. And that's how he's thinking of them as a light that has gone out. Isn't Don doing the same thing? Thank you for that, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father. Amen. I've also mentioned this a couple of times before, is that in the interviews with law enforcement and also we hear it in this prayer, there's quite a lot of um, talk about thank you. And you shouldn't be feeling grateful. You shouldn't be feeling like expressing your gratitude. You shouldn't be feeling like thanking anybody when the thing that you really need, you should be feeling frustrated and angry and wanting to plead with the so-called abductor. So the last thing you should be feeling is grateful. You should be feeling attacked. You know, someone has invaded your your family, um, you know, uh, trespassed, you know, gotten into your home, basically um, violated your trust and violated the sanctuary of your home. And you you would want to put up security. You would want to sort of be protected in some way. Um, and you would be angry at this trespasser, right? You would be directing your anger at this trespasser, and there's none of that in this. There's, there's a sort of casual mentioning of it to the media, and then later on a little bit more strident on social media. So I'm going to play that whole thing one more time, and I want you to think about what I've said and think about what you think when you hear the whole thing in one go, okay? Dear Lord God, our respect and love, and we thank you for everything, God. Just pray that you'll please forgive us our sins and help us carry on and uh, let us all give our lives to you, God, in every way. Let me carry my cross from here on out, Lord. We thank you, God, for everything. In the name of Jesus Christ, please watch over Summer. She's been the light of my life for five years. I thank you for that, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father. Amen. Now, while we're on the subject of potentially using Christianity as a crutch, using one's faith as a crutch, as a deflection, as a shield, in terms of the eagle eye of investigators and, and the pursuit of law enforcement, um, I want to look at how Candace and also her mother responded at another prayer vigil where someone took, you know, they were in a prayer circle and someone prayed and then said, does anyone else want to say something? Does anyone else want to pray? And I'm going to put a link up to that as well so that you can get a sense from that. It's from a chap called Timmy Etherton and um, it's a Facebook channel praying for Summer Wells. I'll put a link to that so you can listen to that as well. Pray for um, Summer God, Lord. You are the God of miracles, Father God, Lord. I don't know where she's at, Father God, Lord, but you do, Father God, Lord. I'm praying that um, she be home safe in the name of Jesus, Father God, Lord. Lord, this is um, Lord. Is this hard for the family, for friends, and everybody, Father, in the community, Father God? We just come together for um, 
for you and for summer, Father God. Lord, help her be safe in the name of Jesus. And wants to join in. So you might have caught at the end there, the guy sort of um, holding the prayer vigil, inviting anyone else to, to, to pray, and then they don't. Candace doesn't say anything, and Grandma Candy doesn't say anything either. And that brings us to the Facebook posts of Donald Wells and what he's saying on Facebook about his faith and what he thinks about his faith and what he is hoping for in terms of his faith. His most recent post reads as follows, If the pain I've been feeling for some is any indication of what it will be like at that day, the great and, that, and the terrible day, when the Lord returns, which I'm sure of, many will suddenly know and be convicted and know They've turned their back on the living God. It will be too late. According to Revelations, things are going to get way worse. The mark of the blah, 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 you will be forced by law to worship on Sunday. Saturday is the biblical Sabbath. This is something he actually brings up over and over again, that you should actually be praying on a Saturday. So it's very pious. Um, and he's, he, he mentions summer once in this particular statement, and then it sort of gets to do with something else completely. He seems to go off track. He talks about, please read and know your Bible. Don't be fooled by the deceiver. He says, I highly recommend the Seventh-day Church. It's going to get nasty and most will be deceived. I pray for you. So n very little about some except that he says he's feeling pain for her. And so one does get the sense that Donald is feeling that he's getting support from the church, and so he's, he certainly wants to sing the church's praises. About 16 hours ago, he posted another post, and I, I don't know if that's him in the background carrying something, but he, he writes, Miss and love you, Summer, with all our hearts. We miss you in your church, and God will bring you back to his church. On July 9th, he wrote, Through all this, the only comfort I can find is in God and His truth. He's never lied. I don't want to do anything anymore except study the prophets and pray. Jesus would always say to people, What do the prophets say? And so on and so on. You know, I think there are other things you could do. You could um, go and search for summer. You could appeal to people to search for summer, um, not to try and evangelize kind of thing you know it seems a strange priority and so the question then comes up again is Donald using the church as a crutch was Alison Harris right when she said that and if he is why is he doing that if he is using the church as a crutch why is he hiding something if he is hiding something what is he hiding what do you think Today is day 25 since Summer Wells disappeared. In the next episode, I'm going to be taking you through a parallel case that, pr that provides insight into how we should be searching for summer. So look out for that. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.